Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Wargaming.net League Global Grand Finals. I am Joshua Clutch. Great. Joining the set by Wilkie from Freefall, Mr. Mojo from Casna Crew, and Magus from TCM, and the very beautiful Melly. And Melly keeps getting gifts from random people. Melly, what else have you gotten over here in the corner? Well, it's 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 actually really unfair since I can't keep any of these gifts, right? <laughs> so she says. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if. if if we have a closer look at this beautiful piece of art, you see it's not only a Razor mouse, it's a World of Tanks branded Razor mouse. And it is amazing. <laughs> I like the colors. The colors are very nice. Huh? And it's, uh, it's like, it's a Death Adder model. So it's used for gaming since ages. It's a very good gaming mouse. And now it's like the perfect thing to have as a World of Tank gamer, right? And not only by buying this mouse, <laughs> I, I can't show the code actually. It is really, no, I won't show it in the camera, but if you buy this mouse, you get the Panzerkampfwagen 4 Hydraulic. She trained that. Yeah, that, well, that was one of the least <laughs> things I trained, but okay. <laughs> what about the mouse pad too? Um, oh Where can yeah. we get one of those? You can buy that one as well, but you won't get a code if you buy that one. But you have the it's Panzerkampfwagen uh, Hydraulic 4 on, awesome. on it. So it's a graphic. Awesome. So you get this tank if you buy this mouse. And you can't even buy it in-game or somewhere else. It's just special, especially made and implemented in a game for this mouse. All right, a very nice package deal. And for more information about that, make sure to check out worldoftanks.com, of course, the Razor website. And also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Hashtag the Grand Finals. Right, gentlemen? You've been hashtagging all weekend. Right. Mr. Mojo, I don't even know if you're on Twitter or not. I'm an Asian guy, I don't use Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get him to, but it's really, it's really tough. hard work. It's yeah. tough, it's tough. All right, we're still waiting for the players to have their settings all confirmed and ready to go. But until that time, we have a little bit of history between you, your team, and your team against Na'Vi. Detail for us what it's like going head-to-head -head against Na'Vi. Yeah, I mean, we have a long history on the monthly finals and the... Um, the regular um, weekly cups, but also we uh, played after the first season, the top four of the European teams uh, played against the top four of the Russian teams, the Continental Clash. It was organized by the Russian uh, eSports department from Wargaming. And yeah, it was a really cool experience to play against uh, them in the best of five in the Russian rules. We also play against the other uh, top uh, teams. And I have to say, Navi is really, really strong. And you see them playing and you see sometimes mistakes they do. But if you play against them face to face, you don't see any mistake. It's, 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 it's really hard to play against it's them. It's quite different. Even yeah. from our perspective, when we get to see a bird's eye view of everything happening, we think, why aren't they pushing? Why aren't they doing this? And you realize, yeah. oh, they don't have the same information as we do. So <laughs> we can't really make those judgments. But, Mr. Mojo, you've had one experience with Na'Vi and lived to tell the tale. What was that like? It was quite short, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> we played one know. World for Wot on Ruinberg. We went to clash each other immediately, both them and us, and uh, simply one of our tanks was out of the sink, and that was enough. Damage didn't fall on time. Yeah. Too much of our guns fell. Game over. That was it. GG. Actually, my team has a, also one experience from the go forward. Sadly, I wasn't playing, but we had the big club class in mines in the middle, and we won. Who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> nice job. So they can be hurt. That is very yeah. nice to hear. Yeah. Uli, 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 uli. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. You can beat them in a single round, but yeah. the problem is in a best of five, so they yeah. can yeah. easily come back yeah. after one round loss and. It's really hard to beat them. I mean, Lemming Train did it also in the Go for uh, monthly finals and then the Cups as well sometimes. So they know how to beat them and they are able to do, but everything has to be perfect. Well, in LAN tournaments are a different kind of story. They are prepared for this and Go for is competition you take, you practice, you, you take ch chances even and test some stuff. But mm -hmm. here you play 100%. Well, I want to talk a little bit more about the region specifics, too. When it comes to America, Fnatic is the top team, but they lost against Simp. You know, any Titan can fall, any tree can fall. And that was a huge deal for all of the teams in North America because now the dominant team was bested. And that actually gave a lot of confidence to different teams. And they are making adjustments and trying to see, hey, if Simp can do it, so can we. Virtus Pro, top team in EU, I believe, Lemming Train, the wild card, and their connection kind of has been, Virtus Pro has been able to best them pretty much the whole time. Do you feel that Lemming Train now, after this 
series of amazing wins for this tournament. It's going to give them the confidence and the experience necessary to maybe best any other team in EU. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we don't have to forget that Lemming Train finished always third in the seasons behind Synergy and uh, Virtus Pro. And in the regular season, they also beat Virtus Pro and Synergy. I think they beat Synergy nearly every time. So online, they're really, really strong as well. And offline, they're also often participating in nearly every event. So. Yeah. Don't underestimate them. Do not underestimate them. Well, I'm glad that we got to invite them as a wild card because exactly. they are the hometown heroes. But talking about Southeast Asia, China, and South Korea, at this point, gentlemen, I don't think we're going to see any of those teams moving on in the brackets so far. Still waiting for results from PvP Super Friends versus Arete. And I want to get Batman on this desk <laughs> yeah. with the mask for one, of these, uh, for one of these games. But I feel that those different areas are going to grow so much because yeah. of the experience that they've had here. And I feel more tournaments are starting to spring up in those different regions to hone the different skills. And if we have cross-pollination, if you will, these different regions, teams will continue to improve. And if all these teams start banding together and thinking of a way to defeat Na'Vi, then everyone's going to try to benefit except Na'Vi. But Na'Vi, again, as you <laughs> said, when you are the top team, you have got to continue to reinvigorate your, your energy, re reinvent yourself when it comes to strategy, and also... They're already king of the hill. Here they are only to prove that they're best, yeah. and everyone else is here to try to take them off the throne. Exactly, yeah. You try to beat them, but they are on the top, and they have to be all, with, all the time on 110% to stay on the top. So they prove themselves that they, even after they're winning everything, can stay on the top and performing always in this 110%, especially on offline events. So even... After two or three years, maybe teams practicing and playing together, they can close up to Na'Vi, but still to be better at Na'Vi, I don't know if it will happen in the next time. In the Game of Thrones, you either live or you die. <laughs> right now, Na'Vi is living and they're winning. We're going to throw it over Game to the Thrones, commentators. Chaos is the leather. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to throw it over to the commentators to check in with them. Take it away. Thank you so much, Clutch, and I think I can just about say this audience has become rather packed as soon as that name Na'Vi started getting thrown around. I see the Na'Vi jackets here, even up in this sort of section here, and a lot of fans have suddenly turned up for these guys, even in Poland. But they may not be the home team, they not, may not actually have the home crowd for once, but they've still got certainly some very dedicated fans in the audience here. Uh, looking forward to this one. And Lemming Trainio, it's been a lot of focus on Na'Vi now getting to the stage. We hadn't seen them on this stage just yet. It's been kind of in the background. We, we thought, let's make sure we show all the teams that come to this point because you can kind of assume Na'Vi will be fairly safe in their first couple of games. They're, you know, they don't get called the best in the world for no reason. So now, this I'd say is crunch time for both teams. Big challenges now here. Lemming Train proved themselves once again in their first games, so they're warmed up. But are they warmed up enough for Na'Vi? Um, it's always a good question. And Na'Vi aren't unbeatable, like I think a lot of people think. Um, they are completely human. You know, if you if you cut them, they do you know bleed blood it's instead just yellow, of tank oil. You know? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Um, but they are beatable. The the biggest problem people have with Na'Vi is that before they even join the game, that stare of death, man. No, that's, that, that's going like, straight move to my over Snoopy stare. Going that guy straight is to my soul, man. Yeah, Jesus. Power, power slide of that stare. Yeah. Ouch. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, um, the biggest problem people have against Na'Vi is, is mm. before the game has even begun, they've already lost because they're so fearful of that team. These guys are really the personification of fear in World of Tanks. They've won absolutely everything. I mean, only like WCG 2013 is... The only thing they didn't they didn't manage to winning they lost Virtus mm. Pro in the group stages there so uh, I just I just think these guys are just almost impossible to beat yeah. the only way you can beat them yeah. and I think you know Evil Panel Squad is like the only team that's actually consistently beat them when they were at their top yeah. and when Go Four was was the main big tournament for these teams and and Evil Panel Squad just went into the games completely just fearless and said we're gonna try do something which they've never seen before yeah. and when you do that and you go in fearless. You can win, yeah, but when you go in scared and you think it. they can beat you, and these guys are so you know they godlike, get in your head, you they know? get in your head. It's it's really a game. It's really a mind game, as I said yep. before. Not only on the map tactically, but also before the battle has started, and between you know the the kind of psychology of these two teams. Um, Huge. It, it's it's really incredible, and obviously the guy, the glasses, and the guy with the hat, Lebois, uh, Leb Shah, I should say, and uh, uh, Dulux. Uh, the uh, two shot callers for that mm. team, and then you've got uh, you've got in the front, you've got Strake, you got Kiriloid, 
And you've got Power Slide there as well, Inspirer and Eclipse making the final two players for that team. And uh, obviously, um, the main brain, Dulux, yep. fantastic player, very old school player. Um, he can play anything. This guy is actually insane. Like, in any other team, he would be the, the carry. Yep. But in this team, he plays that tier one. See, and I want to point out, there's been a lot of discussion about these players who can play anything role, or do they prefer the specific players who are just specialized to one tank? And... I think, you know, Na'Vi hit the balance perfectly. You know, yes, they have their specific tanks they will be better at, but everyone can pick up the other tanks and do just as well. These guys are literally just the, the most talented people you can put in a team at times. You know, they, they are phenomenal. And if there's anyone who can dethrone them, it's going to be Lemming Train. That's Lem the thing. L Lemming you know? Train are just on, on they're, a roll. They're on that point. If there's any crowd to do it with them, you know, if there's any place where they can do it. It's hopefully now. We are almost ready to get underway, ladies and gents. Put your hands together. We are about to get into the game. First map, it's going to be mine. You can see it on your screen right there. It's going to be Na'Vi up against Lemming Train. What a phenomenal start to this one. And I cannot believe what we're going to be seeing here. And I think we need to kind of discuss what we can expect from these two. Well, you know, we can expect probably slower games at the beginning. I think um, still Mojo and Magus really hit on the head there. They said... Lemming Train, they can get themselves into games. They need to just suss out the other team and make sure that they're uh, good enough. Uh, we are back in the garage. Um, and that was uh, Dulux for Navi, the team leader. Taking uh, a moment. Uh, just taking a moment. He said one sec, so should be in game very shortly. Indeed, we are going to be loading that game up. So should be underway in about 20, wow. 35 seconds and or I, so. I'm going to give this one straight to you, pretty much, to take us through the tank choices here, because this is not your standard lineups we're seeing. Take me through what we're about to witness here. So for Lemming Train, we've got the 5100, T32, T69, double AMX, 3090, double T1. Um, and for the side of Navi, we've got uh, the double T69, no, oh, triple T69, yeah. double AMX, 3090, double T1. So more of a classic lineup from the side of Navi. You know, a lot of teams have been uh, going for that AMX 5100 and the T32 on this map, but indeed they're going to be staying with the, the more, and let's say, middle of 2013, end of 2013 lineup now. Obviously, we're in 2014, things have changed a little bit. Double AMX 3090 will undoubtedly be heading towards that hill. But again, it's quite strange because the Triple AMX 3090 is really a great tank from the from the north because you can get all three up the hill, you can get that hill dominance, and then you can move out from there. So, Na'Vi will be starting in the north, as you mentioned, in red. Lemming Train in blue from the south. And obviously, well, that hill, that one central location, that's going to be claimed and dominated by Na'Vi initially. And where do we think we see this game evolving to after that? Because, well, really, Lemming Train have to find their route back in now. They have to find a way to unravel Na'Vi. Where's their best chance of doing this? Well, it's, it's hard. I think reactive play is the key for Lemming Train. They just need to make sure those reactions are absolutely on point. Because for Na'Vi, they can dictate the, the state of play because they have that higher ground. They have the hill, you remember? Higher ground in World of Tanks is one of the most important things, just of like course. in any other kind of engagement in real life or in games. And uh, from there, Lemming Train need to react. They need to make sure they react perfectly. Uh, Na'Vi, if they push off incorrectly or even correctly, but they just you know, maybe got uh, didn't take into account let's see, a tier one, uh, then Lemming Train can really pounce. But I think we need to point out what uh, Still Mojo said then. You know, they made one small mistake against Na'Vi, and it was truly punished. And they're a team that do not let you get away with that one moment. You're like, oh, geez, I hope no one noticed that. These guys will be instantly on it. And there's the first kill coming in for Na'Vi. That is Snip down and now Deluxe picking that one up in the other tier one. So already early advantage, but it's not too drastic. Mines may not be the most dependent map on this, I'd say. But where does that now leave Lemming Train? They lost a little bit of their vision, a little bit of their kind of knowledge and their understanding, a little bit of their backup plan. Where do they go from here? Um, they just need to make sure that whatever Snip was doing, they kind of uh, cover that base for him. Mm -hmm. But I think the problem there was Snip didn't have a bush to camp in like he he done that previous round. You remember in Prokhorovka uh, where he won that play. game? Phenomenal. Indeed, indeed. Um, but Navi is going to you know, be a little bit more pressure and they're going to push forwards a little bit further because they know that tier one's not there. They also know that if uh, Lemmy Train do end up pushing around, they only have one tier one to cap. Obviously, that'll be like one minute and 45 seconds to cap, which is a long, long time. And on mine, such a small map. Uh, it's pretty much impossible to cap. That's why perhaps the tier one isn't so important, especially if you only have one left. But Navi's starting to rotate. That's Strake in the MX-3090 on the rotation. He's going to be joining uh, Deluxe and Inspire Deluxe in the tier one and Inspire in the second MX-3090. 
Yeah, and they'll be facing off if they go over that route and don't just go for the crossfires against Alien, who's been the standout player for Lemming Train. So what a proving point that would be if it does come to blows on that sort of situation. But you know, this is the first time I'm really seeing Alien is being punished here. Straight shots are not going to miss. This man's a bit of a beast. So Alien already taken down a fair chunk. He's down a 6 to 5 and just weakening the chains that are Lemming Train right now. Every single aspect is being chipped away at. Alien does go for reply, but... Nothing really connecting. Yeah, you can't really catch out Strake in that situation. I think, you know, the average player or even the above average player would have just mm. missed that yep. because of the way he was playing. He was moving forwards and backwards and oh, it's quite hard to it's... hit, but it didn't matter. Strake just hit it anyway. More reply shots. Yeah, I wanted to say that was perfectly played by him. He, he, he knew this teammate would cover him up enough to not allow Alien to peek him in that situation. Gets a couple of shots off. Takes, you know, near Spazzoni down a touch, but he can now back away. He out says, welcome a touch. Alien Yo did get another little fleck of damage done, but he also got a shot back. So a good exchange there. And Na'Vi clearly respecting their opponents. They're, they're taking some risks, but within kind of manageable chunks. They're not going to be going, okay, we can just peek. These guys won't hit us. They're clearly watching Lemon Train. They're clearly up to date. And they're clearly aware that these guys, you can't mess around them too much here. Yeah, we're four minutes into this battle. And I think we've already got one of the most tactical games we've seen out of this whole tournament. Certainly. Um, these teams going back and forwards and, you know, we haven't seen it so far where a team has won because of they've, they're just consistent strategic play. They're getting the shots, only a couple of shots, but still shots out. Getting a little bit of damage slowly but surely, grinding the other team down in terms of their HP and, and also pressure they put on. And then once they've ground the other team down enough, they'll be able to open that mm. hole, push through and do more damage. Elian. Elian is in trouble. He's going to be an even lower 404. Certainly an area could be found if he takes out here too long. Oh, he's been caught again. One, six, seven. He needs to move back. He's not in the position. He's got three tanks just over that crest and even more waiting for him to appear in the wrong place. He's been the key player right now, but he could also be the one to let this fall down right now. He is, he is the man with a plan, but it just isn't working. He's my MVP for the whole tournament so far because of that move against Pavel. Uh, but at the moment, it's him versus Na'Vi. The rest of his team isn't doing very much. Elian's now rotating back around. He's going to be joining that tier one, I believe. No, Potomaco even in the AMX 39. He's going to be joining him and Potomaco is going to have to provide cover fire, but there is a rock there in the way. And to be fair, I'm not sure if you agree with this, but Na'Vi has pretty much bullied Lemming Train out of position. You know, Lemming Train now are pretty much, you know, in this real southern position. What do they have to do from here? Is it now just, we need to hunker down? Yeah, they need to they need to just wait for, for Na'Vi now. It's really on Na'Vi to make the next move because of the kind of HP Lemming Train is City on near Pazorni, 851, Elian 167, and obviously Snip and that tier one is down and out for the count. But near Pazorni is going to be trying to provide that crossfire because of Elian having to retreat back around. But you can see Navi are on that hill, and I'm pretty sure they're just ready and waiting to come off. They'll use the T69 to push down, and the other ones to, to shoot from the top, at least one to shoot from the top, and the other one maybe joins the second one on the push. But Inspire will have to be the playmaker going forwards. In my opinion, you know, it's hard to say a player is weak on Navi, but mm. Inspire is kind of their weak link. He is a fantastic player. He's maybe a little bit more consistent than Strake in Power Slide. That's his one strength. You know, he never really makes, you know, a, a a catalogue of, of, of uh, errors. He's only mm. one big error, which you don't really see that much from Na'Vi. Uh, but Strake is really just, uh, he's doing whatever he wants. He's, he's just roaming. He's, he's having a look around the map, yep. maybe finding a couple of shots here, there. And if he can, he's just going to get the advantage for his team. And will we see a move coming out from Na'Vi here? Is this when they start mounting the attack? Have they done enough damage? Nis Bazzoni has received another shell. So two players looking vulnerable for Lemming Train. Is that enough for Na'Vi to make a move of this? Um, it is kind of. Elian is down by a f fair amount of HP. And if Na'Vi doesn't you know, categorize on that, they don't see that issue, then they're kind of missing out a little bit and they might actually regret that in the later matches. Um, so I think you know, they have the advantage. They need to find the right strategy to make that advantage count, push in. You know, Materius is awfully lonely there in that T32. And it does let, let, let Levsha and a power slide make the shots off the hill. Butcher being the focus there, but Levsha does get punished. Yeah, and uh, Carmen has gone down in the meantime, so the man who's been doing all these interviews has been the face of Lemming Train so far, excluding Alien maybe, has been removed from this one. But there's been a couple of replies coming in from Lemming Train. They are starting to make their move, but you can see Na'Vi just engulfing this map right now. Yeah, Eclipse and Strake, the uh, MX-3090 T1 going first. Eclipse will put that pressure on the cap. Strake will be there to provide firepower. And Pazzoni shuts that option down, immediately Eclipse going down. First blood, well, not the first blood, but first blood for against the side Na of Lemming Train <laughs> against Na'Vi. 
and he does go to near, uh, near Pizzoni. Materius now with the counter. Yeah, Materius though is in trouble. He's got four players staring him down. He's been decimated. Butcher next target going low. He's left on a slither of health. Has to back away 40 HP. Alien still low. Near Pizzoni in trouble. Oh, Butcher has been wiped off the face of this map. And this is Na'Vi. Clinical calm collected and just decimating them. Gilroyd is just going past Nears Pizzoni. He's going to come back round. Power slide coming in. Doing what he does best. Gonna pick that one up with the Ram. Now just Alien and Polymaco to deal with. It was such a short amount of time that took Na'Vi just to take down Lemming Train. Potomaco does take one frag. That's Inspira going down. But Alien and Potomaco both now on reload in those AMX 3090s with so much damage to do and one minute and 10 seconds to do it. Yeah, that clock is now against them as well. So Deluxe and Krill. Both hunting down Ponomaco essentially. He's not in a good spot here. He's down so low. Couple of shells come flying through. You can see Alien is laying in wait, hoping for something to come around. 55 seconds left. That clock is ticking. He's waiting for the moment to shine here, and I'm not sure what he can do. I really don't. Looking at Na'Vi in this position, they just look so dominant. Uh, obviously, Ponomaco did go down, so it's just Alien standing here, left in a 1v5. Not sure if I fancy my chances as great this man has been. Nine seconds left. He can't hide. There's nowhere to run. And Power Slide finishes off the first map for Na'Vi. Brilliant little play there by Na'Vi. It was almost clinical how they managed to execute Lemming Train there. Uh, it, it happened in a matter of seconds. So they pushed off the hill. They found the weak tanks. Materius, I said, he was on his own. Yeah. And that allowed the T69 just to pound him down despite the lack of penetration. Once he was out of the game, it was only a matter of time before Butcher. So great covering fire making Butcher be suppressed, Meritor Mer Meritorious, didn't stand a chance. And actually, I've got to say, Inspira, you said he can be one of the weaker links. You don't find that many mistakes, but he over 2.1k damage in that one. Um, so certainly did his job within his role. You know, as you said, not many mistakes are made by these guys, but if there is one, it may not be happening now. And if the weakest link is stepping up to the top of the plate, then that's certainly a worrying side. But Lemming Train, they need to now look towards the next maps. It's now time to re-kind of evaluate where they're at, because mine's... Sadly, it was their pick to be the final map in this one. They were the ones who kind of wanted that in that kind of position. Ensk, however, will be next. And we have, you know, come up with these thoughts that it's more the side that matters than the map to them on occasion. So maybe this is where they can make a bit of a stand. And we know they are very strong on Ensk. They're, they're a very good team. They've, they've absolutely dominated on Ensk. Uh, completely, that's Lemming Train. Um, you know, and you're talking about the side. Mines is actually very hard to win from the south. So, you know, Na'Vi might have just looked like they flattened Lemming Train, but they didn't. Um, they actually put out quite a bigger resistance. I don't think Na'Vi wasn't really expecting that. Um, some great play from Lemming Train. But Ensk is where it's a pretty balanced map, and it's where Lemming Train know how to fight. Uh, it is Na'Vi's pick, but that means uh, Lemming Train doesn't be able to pick the fight. Inspire there doing 2,185 damage. Really staying up, stepping up for his team, I think. Uh, he's, a, he's a guy that needs to consistently perform to prove his place in the team. Um, but he is, he is doing fantastically at the moment. But going back to the map, Lemming Train proved themselves, no doubt, on Ensk. Um, they just need to keep cool, not worry too much about mines just because it is hard to win from the south. They need to make sure that they, they play their normal A game. Obviously, mm -hmm. Na'Vi has been watching Lemming Train play yes. on this map. But hopefully Lemming Train have another tactic. Because remember, this is a team... That one, for instance, uh, IEM Katowice last year yes. by taking, for instance, a grill on Wide Park when it was in the map <laughs> pool and, and just destroying Spala there. Um, uh, they are guys who innovate and hopefully they'll do some innovation here. Maybe not with tanks so much, but with tactics. Well, we can only hope so. They need to kind of find something. You know, I mean, you can't, in the nicest way, Navi one on one will generally beat everyone. If you don't come up with something a little bit different, a little bit extra, a little bit above and beyond, because they're just so solid. You know, we see it in games time and time again. You know, a team will be dominant for either weeks, months, or even years, and it takes such a, you know, almost a game-breaking adaption for anyone to beat them. And we see it, you know, in any kind of game, whether it be RTS, MOBA, FPS, it doesn't matter. It's always that dominant side until someone innovates far enough to change it. And maybe Lemming Train in a situation like this in front of their home crowd with everything behind them, they've won so much so far. They've done so well. They were in the groups, remember. They were in the hardest place to get away from. They had so much going on in that group as well. They were in the group of death and yet they made it here already. Let's not write that out. Let's not forget that. They are a talented team, but they've got to step up and above now. This is when they have to go that extra step. And, you know, 
There's been a couple of players, uh, Taz being one of them, if the Polish crowd knows who this lovely man is, walking around and he did the same not too long ago for, you know, for his team in his game. Now it's time for these guys to do the same. They have to step up to make these titans fall. It's as simple as that. Na'Vi can just be themselves and win. Simple as that. They don't need to go above and beyond. They can play their standard, good, consistent, clinical game and it's near on untouchable. To shake them, you've got to do something good. So. Ensk, is that a map we can see the innovation on? You know, it's it has had some changes. It's been adapted. You know, we've seen the green zone in play. We've seen very passive southern, you know, sit in you know, that little camping circle almost and try and lock it down. We've seen people trying to bait the rotates over the railroad lines with a waffle, well, waffle tiger, I'm going to say, I can't help myself. Um, <laughs> but is this where Lemon Train may be able to innovate? Yeah, I think this is this is where they'll need to bring out the A game, really, the the A tactic. Maybe look towards that green zone you can see on your screens right now. Uh, that city there as well. I mean, they've always been the team to push up into the city. They've always been that team to dominate the city. But the green zone may be an option right now. From the north, it will be Lemming Train. And from the south, 1-0 up on Mines. It will be Natus Vinciri. Yeah, Na'Vi looking good in this one. <laughs> Lemming Train, they've got to prove it here. But... You can see them on your screens. You can see the focus on their faces. The last commands being made. The last orders being told. Alien looking quite quiet, looking focused, as does the rest. Navi, exactly the same. So take me through these tank lineups and what we can expect to see here from these two in these starting positions. So triple 50, 100, that tier 8 French heavy tank, double IS-3, that tier 8 a Russian uh, tier 8 tank. So it's it's going to be a pretty standard lineup for these two teams. I would have expected that just because, you know, despite it being blind picks, this is pretty much the most consistent lineup you can have on this map. You yeah. have that burst potential from the 5100s. You have the consistent alpha damage from the IS-3 and that BL-9. And you have the HP and the armor to go alongside it. So both teams actually heading over towards the wow. uh, green side. No spots coming out so far. <laughs> so they have no idea they're going to they're be going both on the same area. Dulux going forward, so he will be able to spot out if he can. But this is what we saw uh, another team do. I believe that was uh, Arete going forward on, on Ensk. Uh, but at the moment, Na'Vi kind of walking into a trap, but Potomako kind of off on the limb. And it will take a while for that 5100 to Ooh. rotate up from the back. Lepus court. Yeah, Niaz Bazzoni has got the fire down towards Lefshan. Inspiry now joins it, but Power Slide and Kirill just powering forward down that six line. And here comes refer Return Fire. Not connecting. Only player for Lemon Train to be damaged so far is Snip in the tier one. But here comes Power Slide. Here comes Kirill. These guys are right into the face of Niaz Bazzoni and Materius. They're in trouble. Power Slide going in. He's going to get the fire through, but they don't expect that player off to the side in the northeast. Aliens there, but Niaz Bazzoni holds on. Power Slide might need to back away. Two more shells is all he has to do damage with. He's got to reevaluate this. They did not expect Potomako to be over there doing the work. Potomako's got damage on him. But still, there's a back off coming from Na'Vi. The initial assault didn't seem to do the damage. Well, it, it did a little bit of damage. Uh, Ilian's down to 699, so Potomako's down to 744. Uh, but Strake was the one to do the damage there in the 5100. He is reloading. That means Na'Vi will almost undoubtedly reverse, get back out of there, reset the fight a little bit, and then push forward. But Lemming Train can categorize on that because it does mean that they can go forwards themselves. They know uh, that once you're moving, you obviously have a decrease in accuracy. Another kill, go, the first kill going now for Lemming Train, Dulux. And being the victim, the team captain of Na'Vi, obviously, but uh, definitely a, a very aggressive move for Na'Vi. This is actually one of the innovations on this map. Uh, going forwards along the tr train line, trying to catch out a team on the rotate. Lemming Train were ready and waiting. They didn't uh, push too many tanks across, especially those IS-3s on Meritorious and Nia Pazorni. That was fantastic. Now, Carmen's time to shine. He's going to be going towards that cap. Maybe take out Eclipse. If they can take out Eclipse, that'll be both tier ones out of the game. They can go in for the cap. They can put that pressure on, but it's a question if they can, because Eclipse is probably the best tier one player in the world. Yeah, there's certainly uh, an experienced head on those shoulders. You're not going to be catching this guy out. And, well, it's, it's time for the big man to prove himself. It is Carmen right down there. So we'll have to see if that one comes through. But still, Materius in place. It seems as though Na'Vi are getting themselves ready for maybe another little bit of a onslaught here. And the question is, will Lemming Train survive it again? Well, Poto Macro is on reload, which definitely isn't good for Lemming Train. Inspire's going forwards in that IS-3, so he'll be able to do the alpha damage shutdown. 
Wow, Inspire absolutely decimating Alien there. He is down and out, and that has opened up a viable path for like some of Shard to push forward. Power Slide to have a little bit of a moment. Strake as well coming through. He's going to get some fire down as well. Not connecting ideally just yet, but he's in such a good position. Nils Pazorni has to back away. There's too many people here. Too much power coming towards Lemming Train. They're stuck. They are cornered, and further fire comes in. Nils Pazorni survives. Reload just about available now of Shard. Waiting as well on those eyes threes, not too far, but Pod and Mako in a good spot. They might be able to pinch these guys in. Love shards. Oh, oh, oh my word, Inspira turns around. Pod and Mako just gone off the map. Cap is beginning though. That's a little element there, but still, Nils Pizzoni is backing away. But is it fast enough? Inspire around the corner. Can you believe he's just about alive? But he can't get away fast enough. Materia is taking a couple of shots for him, but he's been taken down by Love Shard, and the push continues from Navi, looking unstoppable. Butcher is being butchered this time. The Shah is happy with more. He wants more. Power slide claims it. Strike comes in. And the last man alive for Lemming Train is just Carmen. Carmen is going to get taken down by Clips or by Power Slide even at the end. So a GG does go to Navi on end springing there. Score to 2 0. All they need now is one draw in this best of five to continue through this bracket. Uh, and honestly, you know, the biggest problem there was just luck from the side of Na'Vi because Potomaka was on reload at the worst possible time yep. in that 5100. You can see on your left, he's got he's just face palming pretty yep. much because if he wasn't on reload, the pressure would have been on from him and uh, he wouldn't he wouldn't have been able to he would be able to do enough damage to really thwart off that attack from Na'Vi. So a little bit unlucky from that player. Yeah, and and I do want to highlight that, you know, even though the first kind of poke from Na'Vi was thrown away, you know, the Lemon Train held on. They, they just kind of waited. It was like a rabbit in the headlights, almost. They were like, uh, where, where can we go from here? We're damaged now. We, we can't make our own real plays from this. We're just going to have to sit back and wait for, you know, pretty much the truck of Na'Vi to come and run them over. And that's exactly what happened. You know, the IS-3s didn't make it over 1k damage for Lemming Train. They barely got any shots connected. The same with the MS-300s. Alien did not get a single connecting shot. And this is the man who's been doing so well for them. And at the moment, they they... They look down and out. It's going to take something phenomenal to turn it around for them because they're really struggling here. Yeah, honestly, you know, they'll be kicking themselves a little bit because, um, you know, they didn't win. They beat themselves. Uh, Navi didn't win. They beat themselves. It was, yes. you know, those IS-3s pushing up shouldn't have really, should have taken a lot more damage. Um, and Lemming Train was in the perfect position to deal with them. They knew Navi would be doing that and they should have connected more shells. I saw, once again, Lemming Train's biggest problem, that accuracy statistic being so, so very low for a team of, of their ability, for their quality and their, mm. you know, their results, to be honest. So um, if they, if they want to if they want to continue and they want to actually take these games back against Navi, they're going to have to improve their accuracy. They're going to have to hit their shots. Not let adrenaline dictate the, the state of the game. Not yes. let, let adrenaline just take over their bodies. They need to make sure that they're hitting absolutely everything. You know, I saw track shots coming out left, right, and center for Lemming Train. And when you have 11 seconds reload on that IS3, you have to be hitting every single one because yep. Navi will be. Yeah, no, as we said, Navi, they may not be the most uh, beautiful team to watch on occasion. They don't play this, you know, sexy tanks on occasion, but they don't make mistakes. They are clinical as it comes. They, they're, they're methodical and they win, which is the biggest issue right now for Lemming Train. And they need something. They have the crowd behind them. They have the audience cheering every single kill, but there's not much to cheer at the moment. They're, they're struggling in this one. And I think we can kind of put our attention towards the next map coming up in a moment. It's going to be Ruenberg. Now, this was Lemming Train's choice. This was theirs to pick, but they also have lost the ability to pick side then. So Navi, I believe, have gone for the North start. So what can we expect from Ruenberg? Is this where we see Navi go, all right, let's take it in three games? Is this where they kick it up a gear or do they just play it safe and see what's brought to them by Lemming Train? Well, we saw um, beforehand in the Season 3 Finals when Virtus Pro defeated uh, Lemming Train on this map. Uh, that was Virtus Pro, which considered a less team than Navi, so I would be a little yeah. bit scared if I was Lemming Train. I was never very impressed by them on Ruenberg, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Um, and, you know... We just have to wait and to see if they, if Lemming Train have got anything to, to bring out of the bag here because they're going to have to bring out something really, really exceptional. I think the tank picks are going to be extremely important. You know, it's Caster's Curse right there. Of course. Inspire doing the most amount of damage again. See, despite I always what had I faith said. in him. That's a thing. Yeah, I know. You should just tell the, the exact opposite of what I say, to be <laughs> honest, because that guy is playing phenomenally at he the moment. He's playing well. Maybe you gave him that little bit. He was like, 
that that guy casting just gave me some grief. Right, sod this. I'll, 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 go t- and be I'll, amazing. I'll mention that to him later. You should. So she'd be like, "Can yeah. you stop playing so well? Because you make me look like a fool." <laughs> I think you need to say that to him, and maybe he'll help you out. But we are still waiting on these guys to sort everything out, have the last little bit of a chat with each other. Because let me train. They're not out if they lose this. They drop down to the lowers. Hmm. That's completely fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. I've seen teams fight through the lowers to come back to win the finals. If there's any story you wanted of an underdog, that would be it. But there's still at least one more map here. And you were saying, you know, Lemon Train have never been that all-inspiring team on this map. You know, I remember Denova making them look fairly unknown almost. You know, Denova were such an outstanding force against these guys, and I'm curious to see what they can bring. And you've got to remember, Nav- uh, Lemon Train yep. went to that lower brackets yesterday. They got crushed by Simp, thrown down, and then they came back and crushed Simp. And this is what uh, Blue Boy's captain was saying on the analyst desk. He was saying, look, Lemming Train are a great team, but when they first play another team, they feel a little bit uncomfortable. They don't know what, they, what, they, what you're going to do, and they lose. But once they've played you, they understand your style, they adapt, and they win. So if they do come through the lowest bracket, they will be going in, and they could take it. But we're moving on to Ruhrenberg from the south. It will be a Lemming Train from the north. It's going to be Na'Vi. And anything less than a victory here for Lemming Train will mean this game is Na'Vi's. So a draw gives it to Na'Vi. A win gives it to Na'Vi. So Lemming Train, they've got to step up here. And you can see it on their faces. That is pressure if I've ever seen it. And these guys, this is their moment to shine. This is crunch time. And well, got to say, Na'Vi look calm, cool and collected. So why don't you take us into this and explain what we're seeing in the tank choices here. Some really strange stuff from both teams. Quadruple AMX 5100, AMX 3090, double T1. That's from Lemming Train. Na'Vi is something similar. Uh, quadruple AMX 5100, IS3, double T1. So the only difference is that AMX 3090 will give them a little bit more speed. And uh, that's for Na'Vi. And uh, obviously the IS3 will provide that power. Uh, but interesting pickups either way. Drake being extremely aggressive. He knows that the most of Lemming Train will be uh, reloading at the beginning, so they won't be able to get the shots off. Uh, but an aggressive, pretty much standard start from Na'Vi. Uh, a little bit unusual for Lemming Train because you don't usually see teams going so aggressive across. They usually just stay in the yes. middle, go for that F-Road shooting, try and get some damage across Inspire, trying to land the first shell. Does, to, does so, taking Nia Pazoni down to 1093. Well, we might see this village brawl beginning soon. It may have been the, well, it was the undoing of Fnatic earlier. They also put them towards the lowest, but these guys are so close now. Inspire is right amongst them. He's got one shell to the left. He's got a couple of bits of fire coming through towards him. Pot and Mako and Nia's Pazorni are not far away either. Butcher is laying down the fire there. Join in with the rest now. They are getting good damage towards the opponent. Na'Vi are getting a little bit of a, you know, bit of heat here. Strike's gone a little bit lower. As has Inspire, but carmen has gone down. Nia's Pazorni also re- that, received that shell earlier. So it's a very close tense battle almost just split by that one row but alien moving in might be in trouble he's out on the limb he's gonna try and draw Kirill in alien now takes a beating but he's got some cover snip lays down the fire but it's not enough alien's in trouble alien has no support here his team have been cut off inspire and power slide moving in they're taking materials down he's taking these guys down oh, 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 oh. alien still alive snip trying to do what he can but 3v1 almost alien i don't know how he's alive here Kirill is just waiting on that reload i believe he's gonna be taking him down momentarily near Pazorn is now surrounded. He's being swarmed by Na'Vi. And another brilliant shot coming through. Lashar is doing real damage here as just Alien and Butcher stand. And this has been an absolute bloodbath for Lemming Train. But to be honest, Alien completely outplayed Kiriloid then. It was almost embarrassing how bad Kiriloid played and almost incredible how good Alien played Butcher. Surprisingly, st- well, not surprisingly, still alive, I guess, because of the position he was in. In that AMX 51, he's still sitting comfortable on 1.4k HP. Quite a lot of work to do, to yeah, be honest. Yeah. But he doesn't have quite enough damage to do it. Yeah, 1v7 is a little bit tough. And now he's literally being picked at side by side. Strike comes around for one. He's been drawn forward. And there we have it. Lavshar will deal the final blow. And well, Na'Vi pick up the victory. No surprise on paper. But sadly, the Polish home team will be going to the lowers and they have to fight their way back through. But you can see the fans just loving this action. Na'Vi looking phenomenal. I think we can say nothing but that. This team, uh, you know, a lot of questions about how they perform on the big stage, how they do with all these you know, new teams in this. You know, maybe finally Europe can prove themselves. Maybe you know, America could step up to the plate. And they may be close and there may be a lower bracket. But right now, Na'Vi look a step ahead. 
and uh, certainly were on that map as well. Just so logical from them. Um, they did the obvious, which is always the most important thing to do. They saw Butcher was down in the south, and it was only a matter of time to go five versus four to take down the Lemon Train tanks. And I think any good any good team would have done it. They took a while just to do it because of mm. you know they want to they want to go in right. Of course. But it was such brilliant play for Neely, and he was my man of the match for that map. Uh, but handshakes all around Lemon Train. A little disheartened for sure, but they've been here before. Yes. They were in the lower brackets yesterday. They came through. They beat Simp. They went up. And that's why they're here today. Um, all they have to do is collect themselves a little bit, just go through the mistakes. Not so much just the technical mistakes, but more, you know, the overall feeling in the team, the overall mistakes for that team. So a few things yep. to work on. Lemming Train still in the running, but Na'Vi moving up. Well, it's the difference between a good team and a great team. The teams that t just can step up to the plate in moments like this. If Lemming Train can go the way all the way through the lowers and just come back up and prove that they deserve to be on that stage again, then that's their time to shine. That's how they can bring themselves back up to this audience to prove they are deserving of the round of applause that people have been giving these guys. And to be fair, you know, Na'Vi, it's the first time I've seen them on stage. It's the first time I've ever been able to cast Na'Vi. And it was just a masterclass in World of Tanks. If you want a lesson in how to do it, watch that game back and get some tips. Because those guys are absolutely a level up. You know, every other team has, gonna be see or has seen that game and they're going to be worried because if you're still in the tournament, you may still have to face up against them. You may still have to deal with the threat that is Na'Vi. And I think we need to hear from the guys themselves because what a brilliant performance. Let's head back over towards Mitch on that stage. Well, I don't think there's anyone in this room right now who wasn't completely stunned by that fantastic performance from Na'Vi. From start to finish, they were completely clinical and accurate and a dismantling of Lemon Train is what ensued him. Here on the stage now with Deluxe and Ali. Of course, Ali is the manager and Deluxe the captain. Now, I do want to ask you guys, uh, I want to talk about Prokhorovka, the second map. You guys pushed a spearhead up the train tracks really early. Now, to us watching, it seemed like a very aggressive, very reckless move. Can you maybe explain to us what the thinking was behind that? Oh, no, Ensk, Ensk, sorry, yes. Yeah. Uh, we played we always play, uh, uh, like almost played like this in in uh, in Ensk. So, like the frontal push. So that that is a fairly that's a standard tactic for you guys. Do you feel like no like that's fairly normal for you? Uh, sometimes uh, we use it. Okay, so now obviously you guys are moving through the winners bracket. You've got a few, obviously, teams to look at now. Of course, Red Rush Unity is still in the competition. And, uh, of course, you know, our friends Virtus Pro are still in the competition. Who are you most concerned about going up against? Like, I mean, you know, I know you guys are feeling confident right now, but who do you think is the strongest team out of the ones that are still remaining? Uh, the Russian teams are all dangerous. It, uh, not Virtus Pro or Unity. They're all strong. We can't... Uh, mm, Choose somebody <laughs> from that. Uh, he told that we uh, winning will the will will in the tournament. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. Absolute confidence here from Navi. Thank you very much, Ali. Thank you very much, Deluxe, as well, guys. Cheers to you. Well, I mean. I think there's a lot in those games to be looking at as well, especially uh, you know the absolute finesse with which Navi executed some of those maneuvers. So for all that kind of information, we're going to head over to our experts at the analysis desk. Clutch, what have you got for us? Thank you, Uber. Finesse is probably the best word to describe what we just witnessed. It was a finesse massacre coming out from Navi versus Lemming Train. Gentlemen, breaking down what we saw first off minds, Navi taking the hill at first, and then we saw that Eastern play coming from one of the 1390s to put that flank pressure on that T32, and from there it just pretty much broke down. Yeah, it all started after Navi 2 killed both T1s from Living Train. Uh, it opened up the way for Strike to move up to, to from the east side to the almost to the space of Lemming Train, and he had three shots to the Meritorious T32 in the middle of the map, and they just took it out, and after that they just crossed the positions of Living Train. I was looking to see if they are going to use any of that waterside play, but I think it was mostly the T1s that were in that district of the map. Uh, because when a team has you know, that middle 
ground positioning, when they have the middle ground powerhouse, if you will, because of the higher ground, it allows for a little bit more variance and a little bit more tactical control of the east or the west. The east, you have the village side, though, and you usually have one of those T1s in that area to scout any type of crazy unorthodox play from some of these teams to move to that position. Would you favor east over the water side nine out of ten times in that type of scenario if you had the higher ground? If I get those T1s out from the game, I would push from the east like Navi did. Yeah. And uh, Lemmington tried to play from the water side. Alien tried to push from there, but after Navi took control of the hill, they transitioned the t 1390s to the water side and they blocked the path from the alien. Alien took a lot of hits in the island and that pretty much blocked the island play out from the Lemming Strain playbook. I think the entire game broke down at the moment when uh, Snip died on the island as a forward spotter for alien. Alien remained on one shot, so his finesse has a backfiring effect. He had to pull back. Also, they kept T32 right below the middle part of the map. Now, okay, that is nice when you want to hold on. But when you are faced and back down, you are open for attack from the village. We saw maybe some Russian teams, when they use T32 defensive, they actually don't put anything there except Tier 1, because Tier 1 in that situation is expendable. They put T32 where the cap is, and they, they like glue it to that rock on the cap. Because in that cooldown, he's untouchable for anything except expect RT. And then if you have a T32 at 50 in a base, which Lemming Train could have used, that's something that even now he would not be able to break, I think. But like this, taking damage, okay, tier one less, tier one less. This guy is solo. Over. Should have Lemming Train had a, a better brawl mode then for that middle ground? Should they have fought harder for it? Yeah, I think so, but I think they tried to do something in the beginning, but Alien, you talked a lot about that he's a key player and he dropped really low on hit points, and then you don't have the moves to play with him as key player to make the damage, and then you immediately have to go back to the defensive, playing defensive style, so you can't really attack, because Navi got the control kills that he won, we pointed it out, then Ming Train dropped low on Alien, no it's chance. It's a classic case of, yeah. do you want to defend, and they did nothing, and they were spread all over the map, no matter how the small map is, when you control the hill, you control the, the movements. Yeah. So they cannot shift their forces left and right. And when the one take is isolated, like T32 was, or the 69 could have been also in the water. You mentioned HP, and I want to bring up the HP values from Ensk. This was the main play that pretty much Navi was able to do. They were able to lower the HP value of Lemming Train, and because of that, they could push around that corner. Exactly. I mean, Lemming Train was pretty much prepared for this push because they uh, grouped up next to the other side of the railways. Uh, um, Navi was playing the same tactic against Unity in the Golden League Finals. And I think they read it that they want to do something like that. They didn't spot something on the open immediately. So, okay, let's wait for them. But it didn't pay off. Uh, in the mid i 3 so I think it was Le Char and his mate immediately hit a double hit on, I think also it was Alien again. And so there was a disadvantage on the hit point side. They go a bit back and then attack from the other side, cut off Lemming Train and yeah, kill them one by one. Were you gentlemen surprised at all by the aggression that we saw from Na'Vi in battle number two? Uh, I expected more careful play, but we have seen this kind of uh, gameplay they do. They use it already on the Russian servers. And when we used, saw it first time, we were all like, wow, look at this. This is like amazing. It's really aggressive tactics, yeah. uh, versatile. And we have seen execution in really perfectionist style. They pushed, they got stopped, they regrouped, they knew where the Lemming Chain tanks were, and they used every weakness they saw. Now, only opening as a spectator, so not as a player, as a spectator, I can see. When they were pulling back, Navi 5100s were almost empty of shells. They had one head two, one head three, while 50s of Lemming Chain were full. They didn't shoot almost anything. If they left one guy, to brawl Strikoid one-on-one -on -one and pushed with the remainder for the middle, they had a fighting chance. They had a chance to catch them off guard because they were two by two in their wagons and they I don't think they could respond easy on that. Yeah, the two by two push coming from yeah. south to north and now, was... Now, now they allowed themselves to get isolated because once now we knew they were, they just re-rotated, cut off those two tanks on the right okay, side. Able to push. The yeah. left tanks were cut off and bye-bye. They again, again become to being aggressive without going YOLO. They did the initial push took back, uh, reloaded the 5100s, and then pushed again. Yeah. Yeah. Best defense is a great yeah. offense. Exactly. That's what we saw on and that map. Really if you attack enough, you don't need to defend <laughs> that much. They, they use yeah. every shred of information you give them. Yeah. Every, like, they 
Like, well, like they have a GPS. And they do they, it on the fly. <laughs> and the information that was important too, and I mentioned this because yeah. you were said, oh, they're not spotted. They haven't spotted anything. That's still information. Exactly. If they move into that area and they say, there's no tanks here, keep going, fellas. Keep going. Keep going. We're not going to have any defensive positions. But they use hold, every but. possible cover they can. Even when they push with those tanks, they use wagons from the one side so they could protect them from possible fire from that side, while some lower wagons on the left side, they can be used for them to shoot on that side. So they're using every possible trick in a game. Yeah. They know the maps perfectly, so it's they do. definitely on the side. Map knowledge is huge, but Ruinberg, okay, Butcher, like we thought you redeemed yourself, buddy, <laughs> but not in the fight. That is, that's the biggest downfall to have there. And in, in America, we look at the disadvantage of, of South positioning for Ruinberg. And usually when a lot of Delta Village plays happen, that village over to the east, it's usually the north that gets there first. Mr. Mojo, you disagree. It's actually... The distance doesn't matter as much. It's where the firefight begins. But for me, how can you devote all of your forces Actually, to that to that section if you're keeping Butcher all the way in the city? South, if played uh, by strictly middle push, maybe combined from the left a bit, can be really dominant because you can catch their tanks on the middle when they're going from the north. Uh, and you keep just a fraction on your, or for your forces in that upper delta village. But... Uh, that is what actually Lemming Train expected. They sent that 50 with Tier 1 ahead. Tier 1 is supposed to spot, are there Navi forces in a city? No, there are not. 50 comes and aims the middle. And they expect it because of IS-3, actually, because that's very similar to that tactic, that Navi will be on the lower middle. But Navi didn't fall for that. They sent all tanks up. Yeah. They knew the 50 was in a city because when Carmen went up and died, no one sends a Tier 1 unless to spot for a tank behind him. Yeah. When he died, they knew. There are four of them here. We are pushing. So we saw a really brilliant gameplay by Alien. That was really amusing detail, but it was just a detail. That it, was five it, versus four. It was a detail, but that's what we've talked about again over this weekend. We will talk about it many times, the one versus one type scenario. He was able to dodge a couple of those shots. RNG bounces, of course, but it comes down to the heart of player skill. And I think Alien will at least have a little bit of a smile at the end of that game. That was a beautiful dance. Yeah, yeah. it was. <laughs> it was. I wish I had a chart that I could pull down and detail, you know, because we called the F crossroads where the, it's right pretty much in the center of the map where the city ends and it goes into the open area. And we have seen tanks stay in that section from the middle side and be able to continually fire into tanks that are starting to aggress. Middle, middle in, is in a key, key point to control the map for the shifting tanks. Because if you control it, you can shift your tanks and other guys can't. And actually, we saw the tactic that Lemington used. It was used by uh, Synergy in the VGL EU finals. They had 416 in the city. <laughs> uh, two AMX 1390s in the Delta Village, supported by two 69s from the middle. Mike, don't remember that one, to be honest. Yeah, but they had <laughs> the 416 did uh, over 2k damage from the city area. Okay. Yeah, it can pay out definitely yeah. if you go well to the city area and yeah. got a flanking maneuver. But they had the same position. Now, Lemming Train used 1500 butcher in the city, but they had 416. Yeah. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, thank you for your insight. Congratulations to Navi. As they move on, they'll be facing Virtus Pro, I believe, in the winner's bracket finals. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to get the next match underway. Make sure to hashtag the grand finals. We'll check in with Melly in just a little bit. Stay tuned. <laughs> 